Wow. That was so serious. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now we're legit. Totally legit. Have a real intro song and everything. We don't have to make up our own. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. I know you've been loving our, our intro songs I out there. I hate our intro songs. <laughs> no, yeah, me too. <laughs> well, that sound means that it's Advent, right? That's the Veni, Veni, Emmanuel. Really, that shouldn't start until later in Advent, till the O antiphons. But it's hearkening and speaking to the coming of Christ. So it's Advent, everybody. The most calm, peaceful, still season Mm. of your life. Yes, that's what the church intends it to be, but what is it actually? Crazy, busy, Mm -hmm. calendar is Mm -hmm. packed, shop till you drop. So many presents. So many. So many. So much shopping, so much eating. Yes, but I like eating. Same. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So this is, of course, the joy of the Eucharist podcast. That's why you're tuning in. It's what you've loved uh, so far. But we have a special intro song because... Because we're changing things up a little bit, switching, switching it up just for this liturgical season, this season of Advent. In the season of Advent, the church asks us to pause, to reflect, to pray, to take seriously prayer. And so we're focusing, just for this season of Advent, on prayer. Okay, guys, we're going to pray. This no, season, I don't want to. Prayer is nope, boring. No, nope, prayer is awesome. This season, we're going to pray. And so we're going to have daily... Get that. Daily meditations. And they're going to be short. Don't worry. Super short. 10 minutes-ish. 10 minutes top. With just a a theme. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the Holy Family on their journey from no Jesus to Jesus, to yes Jesus. Which is why we are Joy of the Eucharist, Advent with the Holy Family, a daily retreat. That's right. Special edition. Retreat version. So hopefully you'll join us for this wonderful Advent excursus on the Holy Family, and uh, deepen your love for the Eucharist in prayer. So where's the absolute best place to to listen to, to do these meditations, to pray? With Jesus in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Where's but a good realistically, place? Anywhere. Anywhere. In your car, mm-hmm. in the kitchen, while you're washing dishes, making dinner. Mm-hmm. You can do this by yourself. You can bring up your family into this, listen with your kids or not, listen to one episode, yeah. two, three, five, or all 22. A perfect preparation for a holy family is to listen to the holy family to get us ready for Christmas. So any family can jump in on that action and even pray together as a family. So we hope you will join us for this Advent retreat. All right. So we are going to start this journey at the very, very beginning. Well, not super, super very beginning. But <laughs> we could but start the a long time ago. We are choosing to start with. Yes. Our Saints Joachim, Joaquin, and Anne. Saints Joachim and Anne. Those are the parents of Mary, the grandparents of Jesus. They totally are. That's awesome. So Joachim and Anne, great and patrons and a great place to start an Advent retreat. And we don't know a whole lot about them. So what we're going off of for the, these next like 10 minutes, is not I would, ha, not up in the air. How would you say it, Father? It's tradition, um, and there are some competing traditions, some competing, like some saints remember it this way, some, you know, the other way. So because we don't have that. And the, then some mystics. Some mystics have seen it and seen visions of what it might have been like. and So piecing those accounts together, we have a pretty good idea, a general story, but it doesn't have the same inerrancy as scripture does. So scripture, we know this is how it happened because it's guarded by the Holy Spirit. Tradition is also guarded by the Holy Spirit, but not necessarily in the details. The Every every detail is, is right or wrong. But we know that Mary had parents. We know that Mary's parents were saints. Tradition calls them saints Joachim and Anne. And we know part of their story. And it's a pretty awesome, pretty beautiful story and a great place to start a retreat. Really, I think we want to highlight the hope the great hope of Saints Joachim and Anne and their perseverance in times of of darkness. Which is a virtue of? Of Advent. Yeah, one of the important virtues of Advent is hope. We hope we have the expectation of the coming of the Messiah. And this is especially relevant to Joachim and Anne because their lives were full of hope. And struggle. And the need for hope, to hold on to hope. Sometimes we only really have a true test of how hopeful we can be when things are the darkest. When things so, go bad. Yeah. So St. Joachim was part of a wealthy family in Israel, and St. Anne what came from a, a good family. They married and came together, but they struggled to have children. For many years, they were barren. And they lived a very comfortable life. They were actually somewhat affluent for the time. 
and enjoyed life with each other, but their great hope, their great expectation was to have a child. Was to have a little baby. Yeah. And the little baby was not given to them for a very long time. Yeah. So towards the, the end of their childbearing years when they thought, oh man, maybe this isn't going to happen, reflecting on, you know, the experience of Abraham and Sarah, reflecting on the experience of Hannah from the Old Testament, been many times in the Old Testament where a couple is barren or unable to have children, and they they pray to God, they fast, and and God answers their prayers, and a child is born, and sometimes a miraculous in a miraculous way or a, one that's destined for greatness. And they said, "Well, we are longing for this deliverance. We're longing for the coming of the Messiah. We're longing for this child, a child." And so that's what they did. They separated for a time. They did intense prayer and fasting. They prayed together as well, but for for a little while, they kind of lived as hermits, according to some traditions, and prayed and then... Offered it all up. Yeah. Never let let go of the hope, and their prayers pierced heaven, and ultimately, they conceived, and that child was Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God. Our beautiful lady. Yeah. What a, a beautiful grace these two, with such longings in their heart, turned that sadness, that barrenness, that emptiness, God turned it into incredible fruit and blessed them more abundantly, even than any of those Old Testament characters or figures. Some accounts say that the angel Gabriel appeared to Anne and prophesied to her that the Lord has heard your prayer and you shall conceive and you shall bring forth and your seed shall be spoken of in all the world. Speaking of Mary. So their, their faithfulness, their hope, is an inspiration to all of us because I think we all have times where we feel barren. I know some people actually struggle with real barrenness and fertility issues, but that any family can identify with that hope, that longing, and it's hard to persevere when you feel that emptiness. It's hard to keep going or to expect that God is still going to do good things. And Yeah, when everything is so dark, like the the sun is never going to come up, things are never going to be as abundant as I want them to be. Yeah. And that emptiness, will it be filled? Will it go away? Will God deliver on the, all of these promises that he made? Saints Joachim and Anne are great examples of that because um, they knew the promises of the Old Testament. They knew the promised Messiah would come. They hoped for it. They prayed for it. And through their prayer and fasting, they were part of God's plan for how to bring about the Messiah. Huge part. And how cute it is to think of them as grandparents of that Jesus. That is so cute. Yeah. I love that. We don't know if, you know, when when they passed or if they got to meet Jesus. That part's a, a little fuzzy in the, the historical record. But I think it would be kind of fun imagining them as grandparents spoiling Jesus, <laughs> you know. Giving him all the treats. Mm-hmm, as grandparents are wont to do, so. Grandparent detox from <laughs> St. Sam and Joachim. That's awesome. <laughs> You don't know what de- grandparent detox is? You're uh-uh. giving me a really blank stare. <laughs> what is grand- it's when the grandparents come over, they hang out for like a weekend and mm. totally spoil your kids. Mm-hmm. And it's awful for the next <laughs> week or two, uh-huh. getting them off the sugar high and back uh, onto the schedule. I see. Yes. Okay. I, I, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I don't have that experience no, personally because do. I don't have any kids. But, <laughs> but I could totally see where that would be a thing. And I probably... Probably my parents experienced it. True. Yeah. But you know, when you're talking about their emptiness and the dark place, and but then there's still hope. My husband and I, we have four babies in heaven because of miscarriage. And it was the one of the worst feelings in the world. You feel physically empty. And no, not everybody has gone through this, but I think in our own ways, We have that feeling of emptiness that we can relate to with each other. And I remember with our first one, we lost twins, Simeon and Bartholomew. And I remember being over by the stove and just having to grab on to to the end of the stove. And because I was sobbing so hard, I couldn't even walk. And saying out loud through the sobs, I unite the suffering to Jesus on the cross and just kept doing that in different times throughout the sorrow. And I'm telling you, each of those losses, they have been some of the most beautiful moments of my life. Mm-hmm. Because deep in that sorrow is also that hope mm-hmm. and belief and trust. And I have sometimes a hard time believing that whole God wants to give me the abundant life thing. But 
it's true. Mm -hmm. It's really true. And the perseverance that Saints Anne and Joachim had, they kept coming to prayer. And then beauty came out of their suffering because of that perseverance and that faith. And that's what I want to have for myself, for my husband, for my family, for all of us, Mm -hmm. to always fall back on that hope that God gives us. Yeah. So that's a great place to begin our Advent retreat because we're going to have to persevere through these days of Advent. We're going to have to hold on to that hope and that expectation of Christ coming, not just at Christmas, but coming a powerful way into our lives. So as we walk this path with the Holy Family closer and closer to the coming of Christ, we let that hope, that surrender, that trust build in our hearts. Now we're going to um, switch it up a little bit and we're going to kind of do pray. a little experiment yeah. here. We want to encourage you guys to pray a little bit more because, you know, tis the season. Right. And we're going to in- maybe introduce some of you guys to Ignatian prayer. Yeah. So Father, Ignatian prayer that? comes from St. Ignatius of Loyola, who had a great love for the scriptures and a great love for prayer and a great understanding of the human person. And so he knew that you, we should engage the scriptures with all five of our senses and experience our imagination, our Um, the Lord can speak through all of that. And so he encouraged prayer with the scriptures where you put yourself in the scene, put yourself in the story. And so while this isn't a necessarily scriptural story, we know that it it took place and the Lord can speak through our imaginations of it. And um, we're going to spend some time putting ourselves in the scene of Saints Joachim and Anne in their hope and joyful expectation. Of, of the birth of their daughter, Mary. So And so while you're listening to this, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. <laughs> if you're in a place where you can, then we just invite you to come into the meditation, however, however you feel like. Yeah, you can close your eyes. You can take a few deep breaths. These won't be perfect. Yeah. You guys know we are no pros <laughs> at, at this. And so sometimes Father will do meditation by himself, or maybe I will, or we'll tag team it. We're kind of, just to be honest, making it up as we go. And we just are hoping that the Holy Spirit will guide us. That's and, being really honest, which is good. Yeah, and taking us deeper to the heart Yeah, Jesus. So come with us, close your eyes if you can, take a few deep breaths now, and put yourself in the home of Joachim and Anne. For the time, a, a nicer home. It's comfortably furnished, but it's still empty because the two of them long for it to be filled with the cry of a child, the laughter of a little one. Imagine Joachim and Anne coming together to share with one another um, after more prayer, long periods of prayer, beseeching the Lord for a child, for the, the gift of new life, for fruitfulness in their marriage. So sit with them as they encounter one another in their sadness, in their grief, See the weariness, the heaviness on their faces and in their hearts, but their closeness to one another. Joachim reaches over and holds Anne's hand and gives it a little squeeze. And they look at each other, and Anne has a tear falling from her eye. In this place of deep grief but trust is born hope. Hope remains. Hope prevails. And they don't give up on God's goodness, God's plan for them. And so even amidst expressions of weariness, sadness, they're not giving up. They persevere. And and a hope, a countenance of hope, dawns across their faces, trusting that the Lord's love for them is sufficient, that his plans for them are better, They entrust all their cares, their worries, and their concerns to him. But with the hope and the expectation that he will hear their prayer. Joachim gives Anne a hug and then touches her cheeks. And they both look at each other and just smile. Because they know that this too shall pass. They have that hope. And all the while, the Lord has planned for them this incredible joy of being the parents of the Ark of the Covenant, the Mother of God, being the parents of Mary, beautiful daughter, and the grandparents of the Redeemer, Jesus himself. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hope you join us tomorrow. See you next time.